SpaceX is Elon Musk's most successful company among a plethora of others that he heads. And while it's almost impossible to keep track of how Musk jumps from one venture to another, SpaceX is one of his most notable and successful works. And while it continues to grow, there are some projects that stand out the most. In today's video, we'll take a look at SpaceX turning into a full defense contractor with the launch of Starshield. First off, here's what you need to know about Starshield. SpaceX is a huge company that deals with tons of verticals. For their latest venture, they've decided to go full throttle on becoming a defense contractor. They've solidified their footing in that regard with Starshield. Simply put, it will focus on providing the government with solutions in secure communications and satellite departments. Starshield, which will probably be the new subsidiary for SpaceX, along with their other projects such as Dragon, Starlink, and Starship. Although it's supposed to be a flagship project, it hasn't gotten coverage or promotion in the company's media outlets. Even though they've been approached by multiple reporters, there's little to be known about the nature and details of Starshield. Not to forget, however, is that the brand's tagline is supporting national security, so make of that what you want. But the question is, would it be purely military and intelligence, or have civilian services too? And if it's going to be military only, what sort of role role would it play? Would it be combat forward or something else? There are a lot of questions on our minds, but of course, given the nature of the service, we understand the secrecy. Following up, the future of Starshield. Starshield at its core is a satellite service for governments, not sure if it will stay exclusive to the US, but that's most likely the route that it'll take. Potentially, it will support national security efforts and will offer higher security than Starlink does at the moment. Given that Starlink already has more than 3,200 satellites in motion and orbit at the moment, it says a lot about how easy it will be to convert existing infrastructure into a newer, more secure one. In our opinion, it'll be more of a software upgrade than a hardware one. While of course there will be more rugged hardware involved for Starshield, Starlink will most probably do most of the heavy lifting for it. While it may be called Starlink or Starshield, that's for them to decide. It'll be interesting though to see both of them work in harmony though. Moving on, let's look at how interested the U.S. is in SpaceX's Starshield and other projects. For starters, the U.S. Air Force actually awarded a $102 million contract to SpaceX back in January of this year to help it deliver humanitarian and military cargo all over the world in times of crisis this year. It was all to be done via their specialized rockets. In addition to that, SpaceX also secured a $2 million Air Force contract in the past summer to expand and SpaceX in Europe and Africa. This may look like a petty investment to SpaceX, but it's more than that. It shows the faith that the US forces have in the company and how they'd be willing to work with and get work done by the super genius Elon Musk for their needs. It must be noted that the US government doesn't offer funding to companies that easily, and for Musk to secure it multiple times says a lot about the confidence that the state has in him. But let's be clear on one thing. All of this that we see Musk achieve achieved so randomly and easily wasn't served to him on a silver plate. He's gone through a lot of failure and thousands of people doubting him before he finally succeeded each time. For starters, he was once questioned in an interview regarding his own idols questioning his work, and he almost broke down, but still did not give up. Could it be that fighting spirit that puts him in the good books of the armed forces? Following up, some more details on what could be expected from Starshield. The military has a special interest in live imagery, for now it produces this on its own by paying companies such as Black Sky. This does mean that some other countries too can take advantage of some of these capabilities, but the law in the US doesn't allow much to be sold out of the country. There's one thing that should be noted, the page for Starshield uses the present tense while talking about the services that it offers. Although it doesn't list any current missions or services being offered, it could be concluded that it's actively getting into contracts with the government. Having said all of that, the company company does claim to be doing Earth observations and secure communications already, plus satellite bus design. Not just that, SpaceX owing to its ventures with Starlink has a lot of experience putting satellites into orbit and beyond. 
However, that experience is in consumer-centric general satellites, so it can't be said if that experience can translate into military-grade services offered by the likes of SpyCat. Coming up, the similarities between Starlink and StarShield. SpaceX has mentioned that the government-based service will require getting equipment from Starlink, although it would require a special type of access and documentation to meet some special standards. StarShield is going to be one of the biggest high-standard projects from SpaceX. SpaceX, and with so much time and effort, it'll also have a price to match. Safe to say, it'll be a beefed up version of Starlink and a lot more. Moreover, the transition between two verticals belonging to the same company is just the easiest in comparison to anything else. Nothing else comes close. Next up, the Starlink experience and how it could help Starshield. Starlink had a lot of experience owing to its deployment in Ukraine. The company has mentioned time and time again that it's deployment of thousands of terminals in Ukraine has allowed them to learn how secure communication works. But not just that, it's also brought upon them tons of legal and financial issues. For example, Ukraine isn't able to pay for the services, moreover, their allies have refused to do so either. While SpaceX did provide the services free in the beginning, they can't just keep on providing them indefinitely for obvious reasons. There's one big reason for this as well. The system was never meant to be used in this way. It's just that with the sudden conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the company, on humanitarian grounds, decided to help the people in need. This was also a great opportunity for them to test their system out, especially their expansive network of satellites. While this does provide the experience to them for whatever they plan to do next with their satellites, it's also been a financial burden for them. But there's another concern with this cocktail. The company would not be looking to blur the lines between consumer and military segments. They may want to serve both of them, but on separate infrastructures at the very least. Next up, Starlink success indirectly means Starshield success. Not just their names, but a lot of the things, as we've discussed earlier, are similar between the two entities. In fact, a lot of what Starshield would potentially do will be based on Starlink's capabilities. So it's safe to say that as Starlink progresses, so will Starshield. So keeping that in mind, it's good news that Starlink soon launching its satellite internet service, which will be available with select air planes once Starlink Aviation launches next year. The surprising thing is that this internet will be able to provide speeds of up to 350 megabits per second to each and every plane that can take advantage of its aero terminal. This is fast enough for video calls, even online gaming for the matter. And that's not all. Starlink for RVs already allows users to get immediate access to the internet on the go. It would be low latency and provide coverage at any location where the company provides it. How that's implemented into Starshield is yet to be seen, but that's the situation at the moment. Oh, and one more thing. Starlink's communication is already end-to-end -end encrypted. Of course, there must be extra layers, but it's nice to know that the initial starting point is better equipped than expected. Finally, what's the potential of the government and SpaceX collaboration? Elon Musk is known to be one tough fella who doesn't give up easily on things that he's invested in. If he is able to keep both the consumer-based section and the government part separate, there's a lot of potential for both the company as well as the US government to grow multifold. Given that it's not just satellites that Musk has poured his heart and soul into, he's actually got all bases covered to provide the US forces with unprecedented power over others. This may also seem like an evil plan, but oh well. From the world's best automotive software Neuralink to having literal robots, there's a lot and it only makes it scary to think about the future. But that's what evolution really is, isn't it? That's a wrap for this video. What is your opinion on SpaceX's venture into defense contracts? Do you think it would be difficult to separate the top secret services from consumer-based general ones? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.